Okay, so I want to go over this paper, which is SARS-CoV-2 infection-induced CYP or cytochrome P1981 expression in the lung correlates, correlates with increased aromatization of testosterone to estradiol in male golden hamsters. So you may have heard um, of the erectile dysfunction that might be uh, associated with COVID-19 or contracting SARS-CoV-2. Um, we have discussed how certain sex hormones might be influenced by SARS-CoV-2 and really any type of respiratory illness or any illness at all, especially an illness where you end up losing weight, all that can affect your sex hormones in one way or the other. Now, but what we're trying to establish here is there is something unique and special about SARS-CoV-2 that is causing uh, sex hormone changes. And for uh, some number of people, that ends up influencing um, their, their ability, or how do I phrase that? That ends up influencing their... Uh, their virility, I guess, would be the best way to describe it. So without further ado, let's just jump into it. And in this case, they were using golden hamsters, which is a, a model organism. So whatever uh, whatever results that, that, that they get from this is not necessarily going to happen in humans as well. However, um, we have seen in a lot of other pre-peer-reviewed um articles that there does seem to be some sort of sex hormone changes uh, associated with contracting SARS-CoV-2. So with that, let's jump into it. So a uh, summary, SARS-CoV-2 infection is associated with increased morbidities in men compared to women. Uh, androgens are believed to play an important role in SARS-CoV-2 pathogenesis in men due to the postulated androgen dependency of ACE2, which remember ACE2, this is the angiotensin converting enzyme number two, which uh, is actually very highly expressed in testicular tissues. Um, this, is the, uh, this is the receptor that the spike protein of the coronavirus will actually bind to so that it can get into the cells. So you have the ACE2 on the cells, a lot of them on the testicles, but they're in the lungs as well. And then you also have the uh, TMPR SS2, and this is, um, just so you know, this is a protease, which is also uh, one of the proteases that will, after the spike protein binds to the ACE2 receptor, this is one of the proteases that will come in and actually catalytically cleave the spike protein, which is what allows the virus to enter the cell. So you need both the ACE2 receptor and some sort of protease, and in this case, it's the TMPR SS2. Now, granted, um, a lot of people argue that you don't even need the TMPRSS2. You could also use, um, there are other proteases that are effective at allowing the, the virus to enter the cell. But um, just, you know, we will ignore this for now. Anyways, however, it is yet unclear whether the sex bias is mediated by SARS-CoV-2 infection itself or by other confounding factors. Here, using the golden hamster model, we show that SARS-CoV-2 infection attacks reproductive organs. So it's specifically attacking the reproductive organs of the hamsters, um, and it's causing massive dysregulation of sex hormones and induces elevated transcription of androgen to estrogen-converting enzyme or aromatase, COIP19A1. Excuse me, so what I want to do um, is go over what this cytochrome P19A1, what it does explicitly, just so that we're all on the same page. So this is uh, also called aromatase. So uh, there are some bodybuilders and other types of um, other people, physique competitors. Granted, uh, you can't use these if you're, you know, actually competing in uh, natural bodybuilding, but you can purchase uh, aromatase inhibitors. And one of the reasons why is if you are, say, pumping yourself up with excessive testosterone or uh, excessive antigens, um, one of the side effects is your body might actually convert some of this testosterone into estrogens or some of the steroids or androgens into the estrogens. And so to avoid that, uh, you can purchase aromatase inhibitors, which actually stop this enzyme from doing its job. So just so we know, um, it is a CYP19A1 and it's a member of the cytochrome P450 um, family which basically means that it is effective at using oxygen and other um, reducing and oxidizing agents to change the oxidation state of their substrates. So they can actually partially burn or partially, I think it's almost exclusively burning. So it partially burns whatever compound that they're working with to either add 
alcohol groups or add oxygen groups or to turn alcohol groups into aldehydes, ketones. Um, a little jargony, just know that it can partially burn things. And uh, they are monooxygenases, so mono meaning one, and oxygenase means that they're adding just one oxygen atom. And it catalyzes many reactions involved in steroidogenesis. So in particular, uh, the aromatase is responsible for aromatization of androgens into estrogens. And the enzyme aromatase can be found in many tissues, including the gonads, brain, adipose tissue, placenta, blood vessels, skin, and bones. So these aromatases are found throughout the entire body. And so here, I, there's actually an RNA expression pattern that you can find. And these patterns will tell you what tissues you will find the RNA that encodes for these aromatases. And here you can see it's pretty much found all over the place. However, you will have... Um, in the uterus, so for females, in the uterus, they actually have a high level of this aromatase within the uterus. And there's also a lot that is found, um, well, here's the uterus corpus and here is the uterus. So here you have high levels of it. But then also the testes, so the interstitial uh, area of the testes also has quite a significant amount of aromatase, more than the median. And then there's also uh, the myocytes, so some of the heart tissues actually also produce an excess or more, um, I should say, it has an RNA expression pattern that would indicate that there's more aromatase activity within it. Now, uh, knowing this, let's continue. So the function, um, just know that the aromatase is in the endoplasmic reticulum, but here is an example of what the aromatase does. So here we have testosterone, and the aromatase will actually oxidize this part of the testosterone molecule so that it becomes an aromatic ring. And so this is why we call it aromatase. So it will create this aromatic ring, and this product is going to be estradiol, which is a form of estrogen. And here, if you want to, here is the catalytic um, mechanism. I shouldn't say mechanism, but here is the what exactly happened. So here we have an oxid oxidation of this methyl group, once with an oxygen molecule and with NADPH, and it'll create turn this methyl group into a methoxy group. So here we have an oxygen, and then it'll do the same thing again, where we have two oxygen or two alcohol groups on this methyl group, and then this ends up dehydrating to form this aldehyde. And then basically you continue this process until you end up removing a formate molecule, and then you are left with this aromatic ring, which this would be, um, well, this isn't estradiol. This is just, um, I forgot what, so this is not going to be estradiol. This is probably going to be estra, estrone? Wait, estrone. Yes, okay, so in this particular case, this is, um, this molecule here that they've created is going to be estrone. So here you can see estrone, which came from, I don't know what exactly this molecule is, but this is just another steroid androgen hormone that got converted into its estrone version. So knowing that, um, when these animals, um, are infected with SARS-CoV-2, there is a massive dysregulation of sex hormones that um, and induces, there's an induction of elevated transcription of the antigen to estrogen converting enzyme aromatase CYP19A1 in the lung. So if you contract SARS-CoV-2, the lung is actually going to be producing a significant, significantly more of this aromatase. And we would presume that the more aromatase that is being synthesized, the more activity you have, which we convert more of the testosterone into estrogen. And in, in males, at least, we actually have very low levels of estrogen circulating around compared to testosterone. So even a small amount of testosterone being converted to estrogen is going to have a proportionally larger effect. Um, so yeah, it's a highly regulated system. And if you dysregulate it, you can see unintended side effects. So uh, in male hamsters, SARS-CoV-2 infection caused severely depleted testosterone and highly elevated estradiol levels. Now, keep in mind, this is happening in the hamsters that are currently undergoing the infection. When it comes to people who have recovered from SARS-CoV-2, it appears as though that their testosterone levels in males have reverted back to their original levels. However, they still have high levels of estrogen.
But in this case, they're talking about male hamsters that are going through the infection at this period of time. So this is happening in male hamsters. However, in female hamsters, SARS-CoV-2 infection causes reduced estradiol levels. So we are experiencing here male hamsters having elevated estrogen and uh, lower levels of testosterone, whereas the females end up having reduced estradiol levels or reduced estrogen levels. So uh, this hormone, and granted, I should also mention that this could just be the effect of being sick in general, right? If you just get sick and let's say you're losing weight, that can affect your sex hormones as well. So it might not necessarily be something that um, the SARS-CoV-2 itself is doing. It could just be that if you're sick and you, um, you're not eating enough, or your body's spending all of its energy trying to fight an infection, uh, that's just going to affect your hormone levels in general. Um, but we would presume that there, there is something uh, more important about sex hormones for SARS-CoV-2 because of the disparities of men more being more vulnerable to this than women are. Um, and so this is sort of guiding our thinking of how these sex hormones are playing a role in SARS-CoV-2 infection. So hormonal dysregulation in infected animals is followed by severe weight loss compared to the control groups treated with the uh, poly-IC or PBS. And I believe this is a, um, a protein that, or this is just something that you can inject that can elicit an immune response. Uh, let me just, poly, I'm, yeah, yeah. Um, it's an immunostimulant. So it's something that you can inject into uh, your what would you call it, your animal, your control, so that uh, they have an elicited immune response, but isn't um, necessary. So this is one way that you can get the effects of an immune response that is independent of the virus itself. Um, anyways, lungs of SARS-CoV-2 infected animals presented uh, present abundant CYP19A1 expression in the endothelium and in macrophages. So the macrophages were also, which are one of the immune cells, they were also producing a lot of this uh, CYP19A1. And this was verified in lung, lung sections of deceased COVID-19 males compared to females. Our results demonstrate that SARS-CoV-2 infection leads to massive dysregulation of sex hormones, which may increase the risk for sex-specific disease outcome, particularly, particularly in combination with comorbidities. And these findings provide insights into the complex metabolic crosstalk between SARS-CoV-2 infection and sex hormones. Now, what I also, I, I forgot to mention this, this is actually a pre pure this is not, this is in the process of peer review. So this has not passed peer review yet. So take all this with a grain of salt and hopefully, um, if it is reviewed, that it is going to be accepted with minor revisions. And so they will probably have to update some stuff, but hopefully it's not significant to the point where this entire thing is trash. So uh, let us go down to, let's just go here. So to identify the impact of biological sex on SARS-CoV-2 disease outcome, we analyze the dynamics of sex hormones, sex hormone converting enzymes, viral loads and expressions of viral entry factors such as the ACE2 and the TMPRSS2 in combination with unbiased lung proteome analyses using the golden hamster model. So report and this reported to reflect major clinical findings such as systemic spread or the spread of the virus into other parts of the system. So it doesn't the virus doesn't just stay in the lungs in a lot of people it ends up spreading to other parts of the body as well and um, yeah so let's continue. A respiratory SARS-CoV-2 infection disseminates or moves across to the re reproductive organs of male and female hamsters. So whatever, oh, we'll just continue. So in order to assess potential sex differences in SARS-CoV-2 pathogenesis, we intranasally infected male and female hamsters. And as controls, animals were intranasally treated with PBS, which is um, bovine serum. So um, it's just a standard protein solution that we can give to, um, I should say, as a control, but that's a very common control in, in used in biochemistry. So we have PBS or poly-IC, which is, which is, as I said earlier, that thing that you can inject that can cause or elicit an immune response. Um, and as it says here, it's an immune stimulant. 
and let me just leave that there. And both sexes underwent weight loss upon SARS-CoV-2 infection with a peak drop of 20% at day six post-infection compared to the control groups. So there is significant weight loss going on. And I should mention that this weight loss could cause sex hormone changes. Anyways, both male and female hamsters recovered, reaching their initial weight on day uh, 14 post-infection. So these hamsters recovered, right? And their weight went back to normal levels. So no significant difference was observed in weight loss or recovery time between male and female animals. SARS-CoV-2 replicated to high titers uh, or high concentrations in the lungs of male and female hamsters causing pneumonia with multifocal moderate infiltrates of mononuclear cells and neutrophils, unlike PBS or poly-IC controls. So uh, let's step back. Multifocal moderate infiltrates. So there's a lot of different... It's not just localized to one area. There, there are multiple areas where you can see this immune response. You can see these pneumatic lesions within the lungs of these hamsters. Um, and you have the inf infiltrates of the mononuclear cells and neutrophils. So these immune cells are, are basically infiltrating themselves into parts of the lungs. And um, you see this happening with the SARS-CoV-2 hamsters, but you're not seeing it with the PBS or the poly-IC controls. So interestingly, replicating SARS-CoV-2 was also detected in the plasma and the gonads. So it wasn't just in, and they are replicating. So the SARS-CoV-2 is replicating in the plasma, in the blood, and it is also there replicating in the gonads. So it wasn't just maintained in the lungs. This is something that has moved out and has started to infect other parts of these poor hamster bodies. So, um, and this is something that re really needs to stand out. So there, in, in humans at least, it appears as though we are not finding rep uh, replicating viral material in the semen at least. So this is good. It's indicative that it is not existing in the, uh, in the testicles to a significant degree. However, um, there is <sighs> what I should mention, and I did a previous video about this. The testicles is one of the immune privilege sites of the body, which means your body actually suppresses its immune system in those areas to, in order to protect something that's really important there. And in the case of uh, sperms, sperms have a lot of novel proteins that are on them that are not experienced elsewhere in the body. So your, your body particularly suppresses the immune system at the testicles so that the sperm don't get attacked by your immune system. Now, the, the downside of this is that if you do have an infection within the testicles, within this immune privilege site, it is more difficult for your body to fight against it. Um, and so this could be um, an issue in these, uh, in these golden hamsters, right? So let's, let's continue. Uh, so in the, um, yeah, let's continue. So in the plasma, replicating virus was detected in four out of five male animals and three out of five female animals. In the testes, one out of five animals showed it replicating virus and three out of five were viral RNA or vRNA positive without major pathological changes. So that's interesting that, oh, that's very interesting. So uh, basically in, in three out of, in one out of five animals, they showed replicating virus. So the virus was there and replicating and they could see it. Um, in three out of five, they could sense, they could, they could detect the viral RNA. They could detect the genetic material. However, they did not see the pathological changes in that. So they did not see, you know, inflammation or architis. So this probably indicates that the virus is to a degree getting into that area, but luckily um, they are, their, the immune system was sufficient at preventing those testicles from fully um, getting the brunt of the virus, right? So, I mean, and one of the benefits is you, you would hope that the, as the immune system starts acting upon the lungs, that gives your immune system more time to start suppressing the virus before it can move to other parts of the system. Now, granted, if your immune system is not able to do that, it is possible that these three out of five animals, if their immune system was not sufficient at protecting it, there might be more damage taking place in the testicles. So uh, there were other pre-peer-reviewed pre -peer papers that I saw that um, indicated that 
in the autopsies, or not autopsies, but um, in the postmortem examinations of people who had, or men who have died of COVID-19, there were, there was significant evidence of testicular damage and orchitis or inflammation of the testicles that was the direct result of COVID-19. Now, granted, a lot of people might argue that it might have been the vascular changes that was taking place, um, the, the extensive blood clotting, which could theoretically cause blood clotting in the testicles as well. But here we're getting further indication that the virus isn't just causing clotting that is affecting these testicles. It is also getting into the testicles to a, at least to a small degree, or it's trying to, right? So maybe not everyone is going to have the virus successfully get into their testicles, but there could be, there could be a small number of people where that does end up happening, and that could possibly make the disease progression worse. So um, let's continue. So in the ovaries, four out of five animals, four out of five animals were virus positive, and two out of five animals presented viral RNA with no severe pathologies. So four out of five, they could see the ovaries actually getting infected with the virus or the virus was there replicating within some tissues of the ovaries. So um, in the light of the infected ovaries, we also assessed whether SARS-CoV-2 could also infect the uterus and found that two out of five animals were virus positive. Um, and three out of five animals were vRNA positive again, without causing major pathological changes. So yeah, that's that's significant. So I, I mean, we're beating a dead horse right here, but um, since the beginning, we've been talking about how SARS-CoV-2, I shouldn't say since the beginning, but you know, only after, um, I think maybe even in uh, December, um, January, February, maybe even February, there's there were already a lot of talks about how this particular virus doesn't just stay in the lungs, it actually infiltrates a lot of other parts of the body um, because you have ACE2 receptors in other tissues and you also have different types of... Um, I did another video on this, but at, remember when I was talking about this TMPR SS2 uh, protease, which is necessary or at least uh, gives the virus the ability to enter a cell with ACE2, um, the spike protein of the coronavirus has a cleavage site that is a little bit more uh, promiscuous or more likely to be cleaved by not just TMPRSS2, but a wide variety of different proteases, which would make it easier for it to uh, infiltrate infiltrate more vi more uh, cells, right? So not necessarily being stuck to just the lung tissue. There might be other tissues out there that are more vulnerable because of this this superior cleavage site and. For those of you who want to know, it's called the furin cleavage site. So anyways, um, just so we know, this is confirming in this model organism, it's confirming what we've been seeing in a lot of humans. So um, let's continue on. So SARS-CoV-2 infection mediates elevated macrophage inflammatory proteins and reduced vascular endothelial growth factors in the lungs of male and female hamsters. Uh, just so you know, we have all these uh, pro-inflammatory cytokines that are taking place. And so this is verifying um, what we're experiencing. Um, and like, so I'm going to skip this section and I'm going to go to this section. So SARS-CoV-2 infection mediates reduced testosterone and increased estradiol levels in the plasma of male hamsters. So infectious SARS-CoV-2 particles were detected in the gonads of infected animals where major sex hormones are produced and then secreted into the blood system. Thus, any changes in systemic sex hormone responses would have implications in, on immune responses given the presence of antigens and or estrogen receptors on the surface of most immune cells. So, and we you know we can, we can think of an evolutionary strategy that these viruses could be employing. If your sex hormones um, have receptors that are on a lot of your immune cells, and so if a virus is successful at altering the sex hormone, um, what, would, what would you call it? If a virus is successful at m modulating your sex hormones, it could be effective at modulating your immune system to a degree. And if it is able to, dis if a virus is able to discover that strategy, uh, why wouldn't it use it, right? Why would it not use a strategy that would help it multiply better? And in that case, maybe it is very useful to infect the ovaries and the, the uh, testicles, because if you do that, that can severely affect. Um, um, the sex hormone response. So anyways, uh, therefore, 
excuse me, we measured, we measured the major sex hormones in the plasma of SARS-CoV-2 infected animals in comparison to uninfected controls treated with PBS or poly-IC at multiple time points after infection to allow identification of potential dynamic processes. Testosterone levels in the plasma of SARS-CoV-2 infected male hamsters were significantly reduced on day three post-infection, and they started to recover on day six post-infection and fully recover on day 14 post-infection to comparable levels of uninfected control groups treated with PBS or poly-IC. So this is, this is um, similar to what we are experiencing in humans, where the humans, after they have recovered, their testosterone levels seem to be pretty much at normal levels, right? Um, granted, I, I should look double check to see if they're talking about free testosterone, just total testosterone, or um, bioavailable testosterone. So there, there are different types. Regardless, testosterone levels in the plasma of SARS-CoV-2 infected female hamsters were similarly low among all infected and uninfected groups and likely not allowing the detection of potential alterations. However, estradiol levels were significantly elevated in SARS-CoV-2 infected male hamsters on day three post-infection, but with still high levels on day six post-infection. So this is something that was similar that we have seen in humans too, where the humans, they male humans, they would have high estradiol levels. And then even, even after they recovered, those estradiol levels were still pretty high. Um, and granted, here they're saying it's fully recovered on day 14 post-infection compared to the uninfected control groups. Sorry. Anyways, um, so cortisol levels in the plasma of SARS-CoV-2 infected male and female hamsters were elevated on day 3 and 6 post-infection, normalizing back on to day 14 post-infection. Uh, and this is likely due to infection stress. So stress can cause an increase in cortisol. Um, Anyways, progesterone levels were slightly elevated on day 5, but not 6 or 14 days post-infection in SARS-CoV-2 infected male and female hamsters, unlike their respective negative controls. So importantly, we included additional control groups to see whether any respiratory bowel infections would mediate reduced testosterone and increased estradiol levels in the plasma. Therefore, we used um, the 2019 H1N1 um, isolate and an avian H7N9 influenza, and uh, both of these mediated low testosterone levels upon infection, but did not affect alter estradiol levels in male mice in line with previous reports. Thus, the shift in sex hormones from testosterone to estradiol detection seems to be specific for SARS-CoV-2 infection in male animals. So here, we they use different respiratory illnesses to see if that effect was also going to have an effect on sex hormones. And indeed, with the reduction of testosterone, that was consistent with these other respiratory illnesses. However, what was not consistent was the elevated levels of estradiol. And so it seems as though SARS-CoV-2 is, is effective at causing an increase of estradiol in male, Winster, or in male golden hamsters. So, um, these findings show that SARS-CoV-2 infection, infection mediates severe dysregulation of sex hormones uh, in infected males. Reduced testosterone levels are paralleled with increased estradiol levels, unlike in infected females. So, um, here, SARS-CoV-2 infection in the lungs correlates with reduced ACE2 and the TMPRSS2 transcription. Um, so, if, after they get infected, the ACE2 and the TMP TMPRSS2 transcription reduces. I don't think that's important to go over right now. SARS-CoV-2 infection in the lung is not associated with major differences between the sexes, so it appears as though both sexes get the damage within the lungs, and it doesn't seem there doesn't seem to be that much of difference within the between the men and the women um, in the lungs, at least. SARS-CoV-2 infection induces increased aromatase. Uh, CYP19A1 transcription in the lung, but not the gonads. So it appears as though the lung uh, is getting a big increase in the cytochrome production, the aromatase production, and the increased levels of estrogen seem to be happening in the lungs, but it's not happening in the gonads. So that's good to know. And, you know, you can read this if you want. Um, I think that it's redundant for me to go over it, but if you really want to, you can read this for yourself. The aromatase 
the CYP19A protein is abundantly expressed in the paravascular and parabronchular infiltrates of male hamsters infected with SARS-CoV-2. So if you if you look at the tissues, the vascular tissue or the uh, bronchial tissues uh, that have been infiltrated, you can see uh, that there's a higher level of CYP19A activity in them, which would uh, lead us to believe that testosterone is being converted into estrogen at a higher rate in those areas than what would normally what we would normally expect. So, and aromatase uh, CRP19A1 is abundantly expressed in the endothelial cells, or uh, and macrophages of the fatal mice male COVID-19 cases. So, looking at the dead mice or the dead hamsters, we can see if there was a hormone change there. And I think I should read this one because this one's probably going to be interesting. So to see whether CYP19A1 aromatase expression detected in the hamster model can be translated into the clinical setting, we stained lung sections obtained from seven deceased COVID-19 patients, uh, four males and three females, as well as negative controls against... Oh, wait, is this in humans? Uh, no, I think this is still in the, the, the hamster. So, um, as well as negative controls against the CYP19A1 aromatase. All COVID-19 patients presented CYP19A1 positive cells in their lungs. CYP19A was expressed in endothelial cells and particularly high in macrophages around major areas of inflammation. Interestingly, a significantly higher expression of CYP-A1 was observed in macrophages and endothelial cells in all males compared to female COVID-19 patients or control patients without lung disease. So in a semi-quantitative score, judging the intensity of signals of CYP-19A positive cells, uh, we found in males, wait, in a semi-quantitative score judging, we found in males, you know what, I can't, I can't, decipher that. Sorry about that. But anyways, to assess whether cyp 19 introduction is mediated by viral infection directly, we infected ex vivo human lung cultures with SARS-CoV-2 and the this pandemic H1N1 influenza as a control, and we could detect significantly elevated cyp 19 a1 transcription levels upon SARS-CoV-2 infection, unlike the H1N1 infection or PBS-treated controls. So it appears as though um, they infected lung tissues to see whether or not the lung tissue also had this change in their transcription. And it appears, yes, there has been a change that would theoretically cause the increase of estrogen that we are seeing in people who contract SARS-CoV-2. So these findings suggest that SARS-CoV-2 infection specifically induces elevated cyp 19 a1 transcription in the lung. Histological or tissue findings from COVID-19 cases further show that CYP19A1 protein is most abundantly expressed in macrophages of deceased men compared to women. So it appears as though that these macrophages are producing a lot of estrogen or trying to produce a lot, lot of estrogen in the, in the system. Now, why would you do this? So here, it's making it seem like the estrogen is a bad thing which um, it could be a sign of a really bad thing that's happening to a male body if it's starting to produce a lot of estrogen. And the thing that I can think of right now is um, with another paper that I read earlier, it seems that estrogen does play a protective role at uh, helping the immune system fight off SARS-CoV-2 and helping them eliminate the virus from their body more quickly. So people who have long long, I should say, who are shedding virus for more than 50 days, those people actually have lower estradiol levels um, than those who have been able to clear the virus within 50 days. So if you can clear the virus quickly, that is indicative that your estrogen levels were actually higher. And um, granted, they were both higher than the control group, but estrogen is playing a protective role. So if estrogen is playing a protective role, perhaps the macrophages are trying to um, make more estrogen in the system so that the body will start behaving in whatever in that protective manner. But um, it could be that if you die, your, your macrophages just tried and tried and tried and it, like, it just wasn't working. And so you end up dying with the high estrogen levels as well. So, I mean, granted, it, it's hard to uh, unconvolute all these uh all these factors from each other, but that's just sort of what makes sense to me right now, is that SARS-CoV-2 affects your sex hormones significantly. Um, some of the changes in sex hormones might be your body actually trying to protect you. Um, 
but at what cost, right? So very frequently, we will, um, your immune system will do things that could be detrimental to your body, but it, I should say that are detrimental for in the long run, but in the short term, it keeps you alive a, just a little bit longer. And that's really what the immune system is trying to do, is just keep you alive day to day. If there are some consequences that uh, happen to your body well after your past reproductive uh, age, that won't matter. That won't be selected out of uh, in evolution. It's just what keeps you alive long enough to reproduce that will be maintained. So, um, yeah, what I'm guessing is there's what I'm reasoning is there's probably quite a few um, diseases and such that will be worse. Um, how do I phrase that? Your body sacrifices your future self to keep your current self alive, because if your current self dies, then your future self doesn't matter. So take away from your future to make sure that you still have a present, I guess, would be what the immune system really tries to do on a day-to-day -day basis. And yeah, sorry, I am rambling, so let's continue. So the discussion, our results in the golden hamster model revealed uh, key differences in sex hormone levels upon SARS-CoV-2 infection that might... Um, that might play an important role in, wait, let me submit offer, uh, an important role in sex-specific disease outcomes, particularly in combination with other comorbidities. First, SARS-CoV-2 replicates in the reprodu reproductive organs, likely leading to impaired sex hormone production, which might affect paracrine functions. So this is something that, like, I'm going to beat a dead horse. If this does end up getting into the sex, uh, getting into the sex organs of people even, and causes even a little bit of damage there. Perhaps the vast majority of people end up being fine and they end up be getting uh, restored reproductive health at the end of it. But what if it's what if it's 10%, what if it's 5% of people who end up becoming uh, severely sterilized because they uh, contracted COVID-19 and it got into their testicles or it got into their ovaries and they end up having, you know, maybe they are restored but let's say they um, become infertile or let's say they become infertile 10 years earlier, right? Let's say someone was waiting to have, you know, a large family until after they were uh, economically stable, right? And so let's say this these people end up becoming infertile much earlier than normally expected because, uh, because they contracted COVID-19. If that is the case, then you might have a lot of people whose uh, future plans got absolutely wrecked just because they caught something as stupid as a respiratory illness that infected the entire world. Um, and, you know, that would be, that'd be sad. But then also you have to deal with uh, long-term chronic illnesses that would, uh, that could possibly take place if, one second, let me go through this. So there's possibly some other long-term illnesses that might take place if you just have a small level or small amounts of, of hormone level changes. So if your hormone level changes are significant or like just very insignificant, if you have those small changes over a long period of time, that could accumulate into some sort of disease. So let's say you have low, uh, low testosterone or... A low estrogen or too high estrogen, it could be that um, you have osteoporosis or other types of chronic illnesses that you otherwise would not have had. So, I mean, that's just one of the, the downsides of all this, really. Oh, sorry. Once. So with that, um, I just want to say, like, stay vigilant. Uh, don't contract this, right? Because you don't know, we still don't know whether or not there is a long-term consequence to having your testicles be infected, right? So... Yeah, fertility is a, a vulnerable thing. Anyways, at 39 minutes. So second, we found that in males, unlike females, systemic reduction of testosterone levels is accompanied by elevated estradiol levels, which might additionally affect endocrine function of the sex hormones. Control male animals infected with H1N1 and H7N7 influenza A viruses presented redu reduced testosterone levels as shown before, but not elevated estradiol levels. This is in line with findings from human cohorts where H1N1 and H7N9 influenza infection in men correlated with low testosterone, 
but not elevated estradiol levels. So this is why we use uh, model organisms because very frequently the model organism will, will align significantly with what we see in humans. So uh, this is also in agreement with our previous report that critically ill male COVID-19 patients present low testosterone and high estradiol levels. Now granted, the very low levels and the very high estrogen levels that could be a protective role, right? That could be something that your body's trying to do to try to save itself, one last ditch effort. That doesn't necessarily mean, um, that doesn't necessarily mean that the virus is itself causing low testosterone, high estrogen. Um, however, I should say this paper is refuting that sort of hesitancy to say that. It's saying that yes, the low testosterone, testosterone and the high estrogen, this is something that SARS-CoV-2 explicitly, specifically is doing. So in contrast to these findings here in the hamster model, critically ill female patients presented not reduced, not reduced but elevated estradiol levels combined with elevated testosterone levels. So here it appears as though the females all have elevated testosterone levels. Now granted, could that be because the uterus and the ovaries are being damaged slightly? And in that damage, um, you might actually have reduced um, aromatase activity. And if you have reduced aromatase activity, you might actually have, um, well, actually, no, here it says it's elevated estradiol levels as well. So yeah, that, scratch that, that doesn't make sense. However, continuing, it should be considered that 10 out of 11 critically ill COVID-19 women analyzed in the above mentioned study were post-menopausal in contrast to the young female animals used in this study. So current studies further highlight that the menstrual status of women may affect COVID-19 outcomes, suggesting that more investigation is needed in pre- and postmenopausal females to understand the impact of female hormones on female pathogenesis. Third, we showed that transcription and expression of CYP19A1 aromatase, which is responsible for the conversion of testosterone to estradiol, is elevated in the lungs of SARS-CoV-2 infected animals, particularly in males. Indeed, previous reports also showed that CYP19A1 aromatase is detected in higher levels in male animals and humans compared to the female counterparts. So this is something that the males are doing to try to fight the virus that the women are not. So um, elevated CYP19A1 levels in the lung of SARS-CoV-2 infected male hamsters correlates, correlate significantly uh, with increased levels of endothelial lipase, which is an endothelial activator marker involved in metabolic disorders, uh, histochemical analyses revealed that uh, aromatase is expressed in high, expressed to particularly high levels in perivascular in the perivascular region. Um, let's look this up so that we know exactly what we're talking about. So the perivascular spaces, okay, Wikipedia, fluid-filled spaces surrounding certain blood vessels. So around a blood vessel, you will have the perivascular space or the area that's around the perimeter of the vascular tissue. Um, and this is including macrophages of infected males compared to female hamsters. And it was proposed that the immunological hyper-response characterized by widespread endothelial damage, complement-induced blood clotting, and systemic micro microangiopathy, uh, the capillaries, the, the tiny uh, diseases of the tiny blood vessels, these play critical roles in COVID-19 exacerbation. Endothelial activation and the complement system are highly debated as playing important roles in severe SARS-CoV-2 disease outcome in humans. Uh, aromatase was shown before to be highly expressed in macrophages and proposed to be sufficient for aromatization of estradiol levels from testosterone to promote cell proliferation and auto-regulate cytokine production and thus fuel inflammation processes. Um, wow, okay. Let us... I'm going to skim through this and see if there's anything else. Okay, macrophages express androgen and re estrogen receptors that may regulate their activation and thus contribute to sex-specific immune responses. Uh, aromatase plays a key role in breast cancer and many clinical trials have shown the eff efficacy of aromatase inhibitors in the management of breast cancer. So remember, uh, these aromatase inhibitors, this is what I was talking about with... Um, with bodybuilders, some bodybuilders and people who take steroids will also take aromatase inhibitors to help uh, prevent the conversion of testosterone into estrogen. Um, and this is, has also shown some clinical benefit to people who are suffering from breast cancer, where breast cancer usually ha is very sensitive to high estrogen levels. And so more estrogen production will usually end up to the proliferation of breast cancers. Um, 
Herein, particularly estradiol is a known promoter of vascular inflammation, and inhibition of the aromatase was shown to reduce vascularization and formation of metastasis. In line with this observation, so the estradiol is known to help, well, it promotes the vascular inflammation, and vascular inflammation is one of the problems that we are experiencing with uh, COVID-19. So if there is, I mean, it, it might be that in men, the, the virus is wanting this high estradiol level to help increase the likelihood of the uh, vascular tissue becoming inflamed. I mean, it, it's difficult to know what exact strategies these viruses are using and what is just chance, right? Um, anyways, uh, finally, COIP 19A1 expression was detected in the endothelial cells and macrophages of seven deceased COVID-19 patients, and these were humans. Uh, COIP 19A1 expression was more pronounced in male than female patients, and macrophages in the macrophage activation syndrome were repeatedly proposed to play a key role in the lung inflammation uh, and endothelial damage of COVID-19 patients. Collectively, our findings suggest that an increased expression of COP19A1 in the lung upon SARS-CoV-2 infection promotes elevated aromatization and thus likely mediates reduced systemic testosterone and elevated estradiol levels in males. Active SARS-CoV-2 replication in the testes additionally impairs testosterone production in males. So um, thus, the lack of systemic and local testosterone levels in males might result in a lack of induction of antigen receptor-containing immune cells required to combat viral infection. So it could be that if we have this experience of lower testosterone and the damage to the testicular uh, tissues, it could be that this low testosterone environment is something that many respiratory viruses will employ to suppress the immune system, especially suppress the immune system of androgen receptor containing immune cells. Just a thought. An additional increase in systemic and local estradiol levels in males might additionally fuel up inflammatory processes through estrogen receptor containing immune cells and their activation, for example, macrophages. So um, estrogen is a pro-inflammatory hormone and testosterone and other steroids tend to be anti-inflammatory. So for instance, when we give uh, cortisol and um, dexamethasone, right? When we give these steroids to people, they're supposed to function as anti-inflammatory agents. However, estrogen um, and estradiol, uh, these, these estrogens tend to be a little bit more pro-inflammatory. And granted, this is one of the things that can help women fight off respiratory illnesses. And it's some, so a woman's immune system is just a little bit more active than the male immune system is. It's a little bit more protective. And as a result, you can have, there are a lot more um, autoimmune issues that women experience that men don't have to experience um, it, uh, proportionally, right? So women with their more active immune systems are more susceptible to these uh, autoimmune conditions and these pro-inflammatory conditions. Um, but on the flip side, they're better at fighting off diseases. They're better at fighting off respiratory illnesses. So it could be, um, I mean, it's all a complicated mess, but it could be that this estrogen, it could be a response trying to protect the body against SARS-CoV-2, or it could be SARS-CoV-2 um, wanting to cause a very pro-inflammatory response later to pump up the estrogen. And after you pump up the estrogen, maybe that's when you end up having this very pro-inflammatory response that causes people to start you know, emitting more virus, coughing more, um, oozing more, right? So yeah, we'll just, we'll keep on going. Um, it should be further noted that increasing age in men, as well as comorbidities with endothelial involvement, such as cardiovascular diseases, adipose adipositas, I don't know what that is. Um, a disorder involving, okay, uh, obesity, another word for obesity, and type 2 diabetes are associated with hypogonadism or reduced testosterone levels. So in cardiovascular diseases, uh, obesity and type 2 diabetes, low testosterone levels may be combined with high estradiol levels due to the increased aromatase activity. So aromatase, I believe, is in the adipose tissue as well. So if you have a lot of adipose tissue, if you have a lot of fat, that can convert more of your testosterone into, into estrogen, which in of itself can be a pro-inflammatory uh, type of involvement. 
So thus, it is tempting to speculate whether multiple testosterone level reducing and or estradiol, estradiol level increasing hits might contribute to severe and even fatal COVID-19 outcome in men. So it could be that um, the, the virus is working synergistically with some of the some of the comorbidities that also create pro-inflammatory responses in the body, especially ones that influence sex hormones. So things such as cardiovascular disease, obesity, and uh, type 2 diabetes, if these are all also affecting sex hormones in a similar way, it could be that SARS-CoV-2 comes in and it's the straw that breaks the camel's back. And by basically pushing the, the diseases even further uh, towards death, right? So... Um, with that, I think I'm just going to hang up because I've spoken as much as I want to, but, um, with that, all I got to say is try not to get this right because it's not worth it. You know, it really isn't worth it. So, uh, hopefully I will have another video up by the end of the day. Um, if not, um, it's fine. So like, and subscribe and thanks for watching.